on reflection, family members have said, you know, there was something different about them last week. I could hear something different in their voice. And then a few days ago, they went into this roaring manic episode. The consequences of an episode can be very extreme. Individuals can lose their livelihood, lose their jobs, lose their marriage, and lose their lives. What if we could recognize mood states and find ways to intervene before care is necessary, avoiding any of these costly mood episodes? With PRIORI, which stands for Predicting Individual Outcomes for Rapid Interventions, we will be able to predict in a personalized manner when an individual is changing, when there are subtle changes in their speech, in their acoustic patterns of their speech, that signal that there is a likelihood of a change in their health state, a change in their mood state. What we're really using here is technology to be a, an extender in medical care. In the state of Michigan, there are approximately 10 million people, and bipolar 1 disorder has a prevalence of approximately 1%, so that makes uh, around 100,000 individuals in the state of Michigan with bipolar 1 disorder. So the question that we would have is, how many of these 100,000 individuals need health care today or this week? Priori will help us identify the individuals that need care now. So let me tell you a little bit about the system that we've deployed. We have an app that's been deployed on Android cell phones and it's extremely unobtrusive. In fact, the only way you can even tell it's running is that there's a small M in the upper left-hand corner. And what's so exciting about having cell phone deployments is that cell phones are everywhere. We take them with us, we use them to communicate with friends, with loved ones. And so what that means is that we have a readily available platform that allows us to collect huge amounts of speech. And in fact, we have. Uh, our database now includes over 24,000 phone calls. And so we're delighted that individuals have been using Priori for about one year, six months to a year, and they love it. They don't feel that it is invading their privacy. They feel a sense of security that we are monitoring their health. And so what that means is a proof of concept demonstration that not only can we automatically recognize these types of mood variations, but that people are willing to use this technology, which is so exciting. Part of the reason why we've seen such advances in speech recognition recently, things that allow Siri to exist or Google Voice to work so accurately, has to do with the large amount of data that people have collected and stored, the large amount of vocal data. And one of the amazing things about the scale of the deployment that, that we're proposing is that it will allow us to do similar types of uh, processing and similar types of techniques using a huge amount of data. Now what the app does is it securely records speech that's uh, in the context of a telephone conversation. And it's incredibly important to note that the only speech we record is the speech of the participant, him or herself. We do not record the speech of the conversation partner. Finally, uh, to think about other psychiatric disorders, uh, there is every reason to believe that any illness that affects an organ above the diaphragm will affect the pattern of speech. And so we recognize that this technology may affect and help many other chronic diseases as well and prioritize or help to prioritize those individuals for personalized medical care. There's no one that is using speech or the acoustics of speech in the manner that, uh, that we are using that is really truly on the vanguard of medical science. It's truly, uh, truly innovative. And we've been interacting with uh, colleagues uh, both in the, uh, the Blue Cross uh, networks and uh, with other healthcare providers around the state and around the country uh, who are very interested in testing this technology and um, deploying it in their clinics uh, with the purpose of really asking the question, it's not whether it works, we know it works, but how does it help individuals? How can we help more individuals? How can we deploy it and uh, make it more readily available to individuals in, in the clinic? So it's a, an extraordinarily exciting time uh, to be in medicine, to be in research, and as you point out, to be in, uh, in engineering. 
uh, very appreciative of the opportunity here that the University of Michigan uh, provides us. The University of Michigan, I think, is the uh, one of the very few institutions in the country where such work could, uh, could occur because of the expansive nature of the um, departments and the schools throughout the institution. So we're very privileged to, to be here at the University of Michigan. Absolutely.